Welcome to Building the Future, hosted by Kevin Horick. With millions of listeners a month, Building the Future has quickly become one of the fastest rising programs with a focus on interviewing startups, entrepreneurs, investors, CEOs, and more. The radio and TV show airs in 15 markets across the globe, including Silicon Valley. For full show times, past episodes, or to sponsor the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. The show is a proud media partner for the 11th Annual Media Excellence Awards, which are produced by Access Entertainment in Los Angeles, California. The Media Excellence Awards are recognized as the most influential awards show, honoring innovation and leadership in all things mobile entertainment, lifestyle, and technology. For more information on how to submit to these awards, please visit MediaXAwards.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Frank Cottle. He's the chairman and CEO at Alliance Business Center's group of companies. Frank, welcome to the show. Hey, Kevin. Great to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on the show. It's, you are doing a bunch of really kind of fascinating things, but maybe before we get into all that, let's get to know you a little bit better and start off with where you grew up. Oh, I grew up here in Southern California, the mostly okay. along the beaches. Uh, my nice. family is an old California ranching and farming family from throughout the state. Um, Very cool. So we have deep roots here, since, actually since before statehood. Wow. So I'm, I'm, I'm one, of, one of the true native Californians. Yeah, you're rare. You're a rare breed. <laughs> <laughs> well, people say that for a lot of reasons, I'm sure. Uh, well, I just, I just mean in the sense that like most people that live in California weren't born and raised in California. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, actually, I'm the fifth generation in Newport wow. Beach. So how do you go for that? That's um, very cool. Beautiful so I grew area. up on the beach, uh, surfing and sailing and doing all the things that kids are supposed to do, uh, you know, in, in this kind of an area. Sure. You know, if you grow up in the mountains, you ski. If you grow up in the prairie, you have horses. Well, I grew up on the beach, and so we had sure. you know, boats and, and surfboards. Sure. Um, uh, went to college, as, uh, uh, asked, was, was asked not to return to the first college I attended. Uh, Interesting. What did you take? Or what? Um, I, I was uh, an, actually an English literature, ma literature major. Okay, what made you uh, want to take that? Uh, I was pre-law. Oh, okay, uh, got you. Uh, communications is is what that's about, and so, uh, but I decided after meeting a number of lawyers, I didn't want to be one, so I I opted out of that and Interesting. Uh, continued on my schooling out uh, here in California. Um, and uh, I was married early. I married my college sweetheart, a young lady. I met her first day of college, and we're still together today after forty eight years. Forty. Wow! Congrats, years. man. That's great. She's fabulous woman. I uh, started my career as a commercial diver, actually, working my way through college, doing uh, um, contract work for a company that had uh, uh, assignments with our, our federal government, uh, it's generally referred to as interesting work, Okay. Uh, for a couple of years. And uh, when I got married, we decided that wasn't uh, where I should be. And so I just started uh, uh, in the yachting business. Uh, racing and uh, sailing a large uh, sailing yachts, and we started a large. Uh, a, we started a, a yacht brokerage, or okay, uh, out here in California. Interesting. Uh, uh, which uh, became the largest yacht brokerage in the world. So I was very fortunate. We had a wow. wonderful patron. Uh, I wouldn't refer to him as an investor. I would refer to him as a patron. Okay. A why? Why do you say that? Well, because money was not the object. It was doing uh, things right and doing having the finest and doing the finest. Everything was about quality. Sure. Uh, Which is and, rare these days, right? Well, it, it is. Um, and I was very fortunate uh, to, to have that kind of influence when I started in business because it gotcha. has affected my, my thought process to do everything we've done since. Sure. Um, started our current company, uh, the predecessor company to our current company. Uh, we started putting the numbers together in 79. Wow. So we've been in the, we are like we were pioneers in California. We've been pioneers in everything to do with flexibility in the workplace. Um, okay. And that's our area uh, of experience. We you hope. were very, very early in the space. Uh, then, well, clearly. we were. We were. Uh, we started as a property company doing land banking and building specialized buildings into which we'd plug these funny little things called executive suites. Interesting. Um, we, like yourself, uh, are, we're very entrenched in technology at that time. And you say, well, 79 technology. Um, 
But we actually, on a joint venture with Bell Labs in the buildings we were building, uh, we uh, put together the first commercial incidents of transmitting voice and data simultaneously over four pair twisted cable. Wow. Uh, and um, that was an interesting thing. In fact, I can in imagine. 80, we had, we were combining the signals from the first digital switches that were being built with a mini computer and running it through a, what we call the MUX box. That's okay. for your time. Uh, I was born in 83, uh, just so you have some Okay, context. there you go. There you go. Uh, and, um, uh, we had uh, uh, touch screen panels, uh, both for voice and data, on every desk in our buildings uh, that were wow. all interconnected. In the 80s. With, uh, yeah, in the 80s. Uh, all interconnected with a clerical, secretarial, administrative core, uh, et cetera. So we could supply all services via these instruments remotely before the internet was you know, conceived of and before PCs were in common use and all of that sort of thing. So we, we've always tried to look forward, not again, maybe not like, uh, not just to make money, but for the joy of exploring the future and helping to build an industry. Uh, Interesting. uh, That's just been part of our, our philosophy as a company. Sure. So walk me through kind of that journey up until kind of what you guys are doing now, because you've probably you've seen a handful of you know almost like revolutions in the whole industry right it's just well, the we whole have. workspace we, we have we, we refer to them as evolutionary revolutions okay interesting. Um, be, because it, everything is built on the shoulders of what came before it um, sure. and so we, we look at that and we look at the history of things uh, uh, nobody has invented our industry. Nobody really has invented almost any industry. There are always earlier adopters that that, that take a lead, but it's always a concerted effort of, of everybody involved. Interesting. So we've looked at things uh, from the very first nascent attempts at things like executive streets through the migrations to classic business centers and now today co-working and all of the um, penetration differences. Uh, up until yesterday, we spent the great majority of our time explaining to people what flexible working was and how, how it functioned sure. and what the benefits are. Sure. Today, and we were very tactical uh, okay. in, that, in that regard. Today, um, government, large corporations, individuals, everybody seeks us out, not just us, but our industry out sure. uh, strategically. Uh, okay. Oftentimes for, for many overlapping reasons and sometimes for unique reasons. Okay. And what are some um, of those? Well, uh, financial efficiency uh, okay. uh, and, and cost savings. Sure. And that comes in two ways. Uh, operationally, uh, companies are free from extraneous costs. Um, okay. Uh, you work with a tech company I know, and I'm, I bet that tech company, company has a conference room, right? Sure. Yep. Okay. Uh, do you use it uh, seven days a week? Uh, I don't, but somebody, somebody does. Somebody yep. does? Do they use yep. it 20, 24 hours a day? Not 24 hours a day. Okay. You're paying for it 24-7. Sure. So in our industry, whether it's clerical, secretarial, administrative support, bandwidth, telecom, network maintenance, uh, real estate, anything to do with real estate, we say people, place, and technology – it, it's very much you, everything is on a, a, a pay for what you need, use it when you need it, a just in time delivery system, if you will, of those okay. three items. Interesting. And if you look at all companies, and I know you have a huge bandwidth of, of listeners, but all companies, I think we would agree, need three things. Sure. Clients, they've got mm-hmm. to have a good product. So clients, uh, capital or access to capital so they can yep. grow their business. And flexibility. Sure. And flexibility is the big premium factor, along with cost savings and simplicity of operation, that our industry delivers to all users. Okay. Flexibility. And when you look at most other structures, long-term leases, uh, uh, long-term mortgages, uh, uh, <clears throat> contracting agreements that don't last me- don't match lease agreements or don't match budgeting structures. Um, flexibility is a very powerful tool 
And that's what we bring to the workplace. Interesting. Okay. So how have you kind of, obviously the virtual kind of office space um, is pretty new compared to like, it's only kind of become really popular. What in maybe the last decade, you'd say, maybe you could argue a bit longer. Is that fair to say? Yeah, we, we were selling what we call business identity plans, which have the same components uh, back in the early eighties. Wow. Um, uh, so the concept of it has been around, but the maturation and the, the number of users and the penetration of it has really uh, taken off since about, you know, I'll say since 2002. Okay. Um, uh, um, when the dot-com boom bombed, uh, everybody went virtual, right? Sure. Yeah. Uh, by, uh, by but not by choice, right? <laughs> yeah, it, well, exactly. But but there was a solution there. Yeah. There was a solution there. And that concept has, has continued to evolve through our industry. And it's fun. Today, we have uh, uh, an industry, as I said, that uh, consists of all providers that combine people, place, and technology into okay. a single bundled product and deliver mm -hmm. it with a highly flexible service agreement. Okay, interesting. With the addition of co-working in the last 10 years as a concept, as a, as a model to our industry, like a, a brand model, sure. we say now people, place, technology, and community. We are the physical manifestation, if you will, of social media in many regards. Interesting, We're sure. We're the place where community meets and interacts. Sure. And You're, the <laughs> <laughs> We're the 3D version? We're the 3D version. We're the organic version, not the digital version. Um, and, and that, so everything that's come along in that regard on a global basis with the way people have changed doing business has impacted us and we have been able to impact it right back. And that's sure. kind of fun. Yeah. Interesting. Like watching just that transition, right? Kind of happen as you've been growing your business. Because how did, because like, what's the difference, I guess, between kind of your Alliance business centers and, and kind of your virtual offices? I, I'm pretty sure I know the difference, but just for some clarification, what's, well, what's well, similar and what's uh, different about them? Well, I'll, I'll, it, as our company evolved, we started out, let's say the first two, by decades or so. Okay. Ten years of our company's growth, um, we were a property company, and we okay. built projects across California, Arizona, and Texas. Gotcha. Uh, developed quite a nice, uh, fairly large portfolio. I can uh, imagine. And we sold that portfolio in 1990. Okay. Um, a variety of reasons for that. Uh, number one, the market was very good, and okay, you know, it was just time to to take our profit. Honestly. Sure. Um, <clears throat> we transitioned from a property company to an operating company. Okay. where we had two other partners and we took conventional space in nice class A buildings, generally in the central business district of a major market city. Okay. And we leased one, two, three floors in that building, subdivided those floors into our working model and sold, resold the space and our product. Uh, so we were, were transitioned from a property company to an operating company. Got you. We sold that company uh, um, uh, between April and August of 2000. So right at the height of the dot-com frenzy. Sure. Uh, again, it Interesting. was a good time, good time to sell things. Uh, and I am a great believer in the concept of enough. Okay. What do you mean by that? When their company has got to, gotten to a size and a value okay. that you have enough, um, you want to look at selling it. Okay, how did you how did you determine what that was for you? Uh, we were made an offer. Oh, all right, fair enough. Good, good enough reason. Very it? simple. We said, "Boy, that's enough," uh, and we moved on. So I bought the other two partners out of the company at, at that time. There wasn't much left, honestly. Okay. Uh, sold all the assets. Uh, so I bought them out of our brand company, which was Alliance Business Centers. And one of the reasons I had and wanted to sell was I made the decision in the late 90s, I no longer wanted to own the facilities. Okay. But I wanted well, to, I wanted why to own was that? A, a balance sheet. Okay. Plain and simple. Okay. Uh, our, our business is a very capital intensive business. Sure, and I can imagine. Every time you take on a new facility, you first put up the cash and the money to put it together. Yeah. And then you sign a 10 or a 15 or a 20 year lease. And a lease is a debt. 
Sure. Uh, you know, and it's on your yeah. balance sheet. So if you look at companies like Regis, who's very successful globally, very good company, by the way, our main competitor, but an excellent company, very well yeah. run. Interesting. Um, they are, their, their corporate valuation is hampered by the unbelievable amount of leasehold debt they have in their balance sheet. And they'll uh, always be held back by that. Interesting. And I was looking at valuations during the dot-com period, and we bought two companies. Uh, I bought into two companies, uh, major okay. percentages of a, a company called the Supply Chain dot com okay. Okay. Uh, in about 97, 98, and another company called Highmark Software. Okay. Uh, supply chain has ended up, we sold it to Microsoft, uh, nice. and has ended up being the, um, uh, the, the technology module underneath uh, Great Plains accounting software. Interesting. Uh, and uh, Highmark, which was sold off uh, in 06 of the Lufthansa Group, um, uh, the company uh, was the largest data aggregation reporting company in the travel industry. Um, oh, interesting. So we got to see a lot of stuff. We got to see a lot of data running through things. And I felt that the next iteration of our company should be as a business services and technology company. Okay. So today, uh, if you think of real estate and then you put on your travel industry hat and you think of Expedia, today we have uh, a, a, the Alliance Business Centers Network, which kind of runs like a a simplistic version of Best Western Hotels. We don't own the okay. facilities anymore. We just supply services to facilities that are ho housed within our network. Interesting. Um, and on top of that, the purpose for building that inventory base was so that we could own the customer instead of the facility. Um, yeah. And so we have a series of companies uh, in the North America, well, they're all global companies, but they're one based in North America, one based in the UK and London, and one based in the continental Europe and Amsterdam that are wholesalers, sort of on a model like Expedia. Okay. So when you book a hotel room through Expedia at a Hilton, let's say, uh, who owns your business relationship, Hilton or Expedia? Expedia. Okay. Well, when you buy a virtual office or book meeting rooms or telephony services or live reception services or even office space through Alliance, we own your business relationship. Sure. The center doesn't. We are a customer, a wholesale customer of all of our own network centers. So our business model in the aggregate is sort of a B to B to B. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the network members pay us for certain technology and marketing services. Uh, in that regard, then we wholesale between the network centers and our customers on a B2B basis through our technology platforms, Alliance Business Centers in the US, uh, Flexado in continental Europe, and your city office in the UK. Um, and those forms like Expedia. And Interesting. So, you know, and then we do a few other few other little things. We're also the largest news and information resource in our industry. We have a publication called allwork.space. Okay. And we have founded the industry's largest charitable foundation, the All Good Work Nation. And what does that do? Uh, um, we donate uh, across North America right now um, space to charitable organizations, to charities. Very cool. So um, we know we, we were calculating our looking at our industry a while ago a few years ago we said you know we know that our industry has a vacancy factor or, or, uh, of has an occupancy factor it's easier to think of it that way of between 88 and 93 percent okay depending on the market depending on the market cycle etc that's kind of where our industry sits we okay. might have premium premium or or lower pricing but occupancy wise that's about it so we know that we've always got seven to twelve percent vacancy right why shouldn't we be giving half of that vacancy to charity? Sure. Interesting. We know it's always there. It, and we're in the flexible workspace industry. So we don't have to worry about what chunk of space, because all we have to do is give away workstations. Right. So it's a perfect model to support charities. And we for, support, I don't know exactly, 50 or 60 different charitable organizations spread across the U.S. right now from about 200 locations. Wow, that's great. Uh, and yeah, we just opened another uh, uh, branch, a uh, chapter we call it, in the Silicon Valley area. Very cool. Uh, in San Jose. And uh, so we do uh, have a variety of, of activities, uh, not just our, our peer business activities. 
Okay, interesting. What what else did you do? Because you mentioned a couple others before the charity. Um, we uh, also uh, have, have a consulting group uh, uh, with a team here in North America, another team in Europe, uh, okay. uh, and then a team in the Middle East based in Dubai. Uh, we have a, a substantial licensing and operational uh, uh, company based in the Emirates, based in Dubai. And we okay. operate centers on behalf of investors throughout Russia, the Middle East, and Africa from those centers, from our Dubai location. Um, and so we're getting very much always building and always operating on behalf of others now, not on behalf of ourselves. We're a pure business services and technology company. And this year we're evolving as we look ahead to the next 10 or 15 years. We said, there's all these wonderful things happening that we could be doing. And then we look at our core business. We say, well, no, we can't. We don't have the bandwidth to do everything. Sure. So we've. Uh, reorganize our corporate structure into that of a capital management uh, structure. And this year, uh, we've established the Future of Work Fund, number one, which okay, has acquired all of our own assets. And candidly, our, our management team and myself are the primary owners of that fund. Gotcha. And we're starting on Future of Work Fund, two right now to begin investing in the technology, the prop tech infrastructure that supports our industry and will support a much more aggressive migration of a larger companies and government to be able to use and operate with the flexible concepts that our industry does and track it in much the same way that really high quality travel management companies work. Don't think of real estate as full, being full of office or workstation occupiers anymore. Everybody today is a traveler. Sure. Everybody is a traveler today, and we have to start managing people like they're travelers, not just managing them like that's their office or that's their desk. We have to manage them and put in the systems that are efficient in that regard, um, and those systems are not available or robust enough today, and we think as an investment company, we can help to power that growth. So that'll be our next 10 years. Interesting. So how do you guys decide where to kind of, or, or basically make sure that you're ahead, well ahead of the curve? Because you guys have been doing it for decades now, right? And you have hundreds of locations in many countries. So you're clearly very much ahead of the curve, right? So how do you make sure that, that you, you stay there and, and, well, we, we're operating in 54 countries right now, um, and um, I don't know that uh, we're always ahead of the curves. As we're okay, catch up Like everybody does. Um, uh, on averages, I think we're in good shape, uh, certainly, but I don't know that we're, we're always ahead. Okay. Um, but if, if someone were to ask me or really ask anybody in our company um, what position we think we out within the industry, you'd get a fill, uh, part of our philosophy of, of operation, a pretty consistent answer that we just try to be of our industry. Okay. Um, and all of our executive team and myself, uh, I've always done this. I spend an hour or two of dedicated focus time every day just studying what's going on in our industry or related to our industry or political impacts that might or political elements that might impact our industry in different countries. And, and it's, unless you study like a true student, um, you're going to get behind. Sure. So that's part of our corporate uh, philosophy and practice uh, is to just be really good students every day uh, and learn and discuss. And uh, by having our news publication, which has, close to 100,000 articles read per month. Um, uh, we, um, you know, the, the teacher be, is always the good student. By seeing everything and publishing everything and writing about everything and, and, and chasing down stories and, and uh, delving into financial analyses of different companies, uh, we accelerate our knowledge as students. And so that's an important aspect of that particular company to us is yes, disseminating in industry information for everybody, 
but we're learning at an accelerated pace ourselves as we do so. Got you. Interesting. Yeah, no, that, that makes some sense. So I'm, I'm curious though, to maybe dive a little bit more into some of the features and kind of benefits that you guys actually offer at, you know, Alliance Virtual Offices, because it, it's quite, it's quite fascinating, right? Like you, you mentioned a couple, like obviously um, a live receptionist, I think, it is kind of a, a very useful thing. And, and obviously if people can pay you for their own kind of address in like somewhere else in the world that they're maybe they travel to a few times a year, but sure. what are some of the other kind of benefits that you guys kind of offer? Uh, let, let's, uh, let's think of a scenario here. Okay. Let's assume that you and I are both entrepreneurs okay. and we both are calling on the same VC Okay. And we both have a very clever business plan and we're going to go in and pitch this VC. Now this mm -hmm. venture capitalist could only invest in one of us. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I go in there and I give him an incredible pitch, of course, with a brilliant idea. And he says, well, I really like that. I'd, I'd like to do something here. But, um, what, what are you going to do with the money that I give you? Okay. And I said, well, I've got to go out and get an office. Uh, so we have a place to do business and I have to, uh, hire a decorator uh, so the office looks nice. And then I've got to buy some furniture and some imaging equipment. And I have to, I've got to put in a, a network so <laughs> everybody can run. Sure. Um, uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, and once that happens, uh, I'm going to, once I get all that set up and administrate all that, maybe hire an office manager, I'm going to hire some, some uh, programmers and engineers and we're going to build the software. Sure. Okay. And you come in, give an equally great pitch by the way. Um, and he says, well, what are you going to do with the money, Kevin? And Kevin says, well, I'm going to move into an Alliance Business Centers Network and hire engineers. Sure. It's kind of who's, a no-brainer, right? Who's he going to give the money to? Yeah. Okay. So the ability to focus on your core business, there's an old adage that's been around and for since I started in the industry. And I think one of the, the first secretarial companies that was in our industry came up with it. It says, will run your office while you run your business. Interesting. Very simple. Very, very sure. simple. And uh, so generally there's a materials cost savings at the outset. Uh, there's certainly a capital cost uh, uh, savings. Um, uh, then there's an operating cost savings uh, because of using things just in time, just the amount that you need instead of having to, 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 to buy full-time dedicated items. Um, then there's the balance sheet benefit of always having a rolling one-year contract instead of a 10 or 20-year lease. And that adds flexibility. So all of your financials are going to be better, um, uh, number one. Number two, uh, your balance sheet is going to be better. So that's critically important when it comes to raising capital and, and, and securing debt, particularly convertible debt. Uh, and lastly, people are going to say, hey, if you need to hire 10 people tomorrow, you've got the flexibility to hire them. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. You just hire more programmers. Or they yeah. say, holy cow, if whatever hits the fan, um, you can fire those programmers and you're not stuck with a lease. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's that flexibility that is so critical in business today for rapid growth. And sometimes we outgrow ourselves on our own mm -hmm. plans. Um, and those factors, people, place, technology, community, bundled product, one supplier, flexible service agreement, not a lease, not employment contract, et cetera. You never have to worry about hiring people, mm -hmm. clerical, secretarial, receptionist. Um, you never have to worry if they're sick. You never have to worry if they're vacation. You never have to worry about the labor laws in a, a state or in a country. Yeah, interesting. Um, Canada is quite different from the U.S. Sure, yeah. We're both quite different from Mexico. Yeah. So as you cross borders, it becomes even more important. And today, almost all country companies are international. Yeah, very much so. Well, even just like small, small yeah. companies, like small startups. Like, for example, I know lots of companies where they're only like a team of maybe like three or four people. Uh -huh. And one might be in Southern California, the other one's in New York, one might be somewhere in Europe, and the other one might be, you know, somewhere in Asia, right? Uh, and, yep. you know, and so in theory, well, not in theory, like, well, I guess in theory, 
not everybody wants to work from home, right? So if somebody wants an office to go to every day, which I think a lot of people do, um, then me not having to set up an actual office in a country that I've maybe potentially never been to as an employer, but I hired somebody there. I literally just go online and get them an office and just it's handled, right? Well, what, what the probability is you probably didn't hire them. You probably contracted with them. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And makes sense. Yeah. And if you look at contracting as an element, um, let's, let's, let's up it from the four person company to the global fortune 1000. Okay. Uh, let's take one of my favorite companies is Cisco. Okay. Sure. Um, so let's take Cisco. And about five years ago, you would have seen in their annual report that they had a certain amount of revenue and a certain amount of profit and a, 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 a 350,000 employees. Okay. Okay. Today you would look at their global, uh, their annual report, and you would see that they have a certain amount of revenue and a certain amount of profit, and they have a workforce of sure. 350,000. Because about 20% of those or 25% of those are now contractors on one to three year contracts. Interesting. And they don't want to set up 10 year leases to hold one to three year contractors. And sure. neither would a small company. So our industry provides an incredible solution, not just to small companies that need flexibility for growth, but to very large companies. Maybe they're exploring new marketplaces. Sure. Maybe their employment model has radically changed, which it has for, for everybody in the world uh, today. Um, maybe they want to be able to find, as you were saying, the best person, not the person willing to move to Cupertino. Sure. Um, and that best person may live in Romania. Sure. Um, so. But they want them. But the person's family, why, why should we uproot families? Why should we pay the cost? Why should a corporation pay the cost of relocating somebody to the Silicon Valley, which is incredibly expensive? Mm -hmm. But they still can put them in a professional, supported environment at a very low cost by comparison to any other option Sure, that gives them the flexibility they need. And that employee, that contractor now is part of the team. Yeah. They're not a second tier citizen saying, well, you know, you're real nice, but you're, you're in Romania. So you need to work from your house. Yeah. And maybe the person doesn't have a suitable workspace. Sure. Or maybe he has small children and uh, Cisco doesn't want the liability of a small child sticking their finger in the back of a company owned computer and getting electrocuted. Interesting. Okay. Um, so there's all variety of reasons why government, large corporations, always legal accounting and financial services professionals. That's the core heart of our industry from day one. Interesting. Um, regional companies that are expanding or exploring new markets um, and certainly startups. Sure. Um, there's different reasons for each of them and overlapping reasons for all of them. No, it makes sense. The interesting thing, and you mentioned before we were kind of recording that, that government um, kind of employees are one of your markets. Um, which was quite fascinating to me because traditionally I think a lot of times government employees were kind of expected to be at like their walled garden desk. Right. <laughs> and like, they're not allowed yeah. to, you know, yep. get on anything other than, you know, a handful of sites that are pre-approved. Uh -huh. Right. Like I think yeah. traditionally that's prairie kind dog, of the. Yeah, prairie dog farm. <laughs> that's, that's my vision of government uh, kind of. Um, sure. And yes, there are restrictions, but those restrictions can all be handled through network management. Uh, sure. And a lot of government offices, particularly offices around business development or administrative law or things of that nature, uh, there's no real restriction uh, that are security type restrictions. Sure. Uh, but security issues can all be dealt with through network management and private networks are easily enough established in our industry within centers or managed centrally by companies like ourselves on behalf of others. Sure. Um, so that's not uh, the, the limitation you might think. But one thing government's very involved with, let's use the U.S. government, they're very sure. concerned that the people that work for the government um, have a good commuting pattern. They're concerned with environmental issues, cold starts, length of commutes, things of that nature, time on the road. Uh, uh, they're concerned with uh, security in buildings. Um, so they don't want to just take space anywhere. They want to take space in, in high quality buildings that have uh, some level of security applied. Um, 
So there are a lot of reasons why they will come to our industry, um, particularly for branch officing. Today, everybody's connected by a computer, not necessarily by the water cooler. So um, uh, as, as people do that more and more, you'll find government, uh, a large, what used to be, you know, 500,000 feet of space over to one agency that has, you know, 5,000 people in that space. You'll see that broken up to where maybe they have uh, 20 to 25 workstations in 50 buildings uh, scattered around various uh, suburban neighborhoods that are all core to the same marketplace, such as Washington, D.C. Um, sure. And everybody's connected via network. Um, so there's an awful lot of that going on right now. Interesting. Yeah. No, it, it's... I guess it's just one of those industries that I never really thought would benefit from it until like you and I kind of started talking and I'm like, of course it makes total sense. Right. And I think, especially as more and more people like to travel, right? Like I well, do. Yeah. It, oh, that, that, that's right. And, and government has a one year rolling budget. So they like to be able to, to know what they're spending and, or they like to pretend they know what they're spending at least. Uh, uh, but they do have one year budget. So doing things on a budgetary basis is much easier with our industry. And that, that can be quite important, particularly for small agency or projects that the government is working on, um, which was where we see a, a, a lot of use in our industry. Sure. Um, and that's true with larger corporations, uh, uh, true with everybody, smaller ones as well, where they, they say, Hey, let's go figure out how to sell this product in Kazakhstan. Sure or London for that matter. Sure. Uh, and let's put a team in uh, for six months and figure this out. Well, they don't want to make a long-term commitment, even though they hope to be in that market for a long term. Yeah. Uh, but they've got to figure it out, get the proverbial toe in the water, beachhead approach. And uh, that works quite well with our industry. And it's, sure. again, is a big portion of the types of uh, large enterprise clients that we serve on a constant basis. Sure. Thanks for listening to Building the Future. This show is heard by more than a million people monthly in over 15 markets worldwide, including Silicon Valley. Kevin Horick's guests are leading business owners, successful entrepreneurs, and merchandisers worldwide. Now, your brand has an opportunity to tap into this dedicated and active group of business people who are looking for places to invest and the right opportunities to support. Find out how you can get involved at buildingthefutureshow.com. So how does the, the kind of thing work? Like, can I, I don't know, like if I travel a ton, can I just kind of use any one of your spaces in, or, or how does it kind of work? Um, there's a variety of programs. Um, okay. Uh, we have centralized booking and reservation system. Uh, okay. Usually, let's assume that you have an office and, and you need an office in Edmonton sure, um, yeah. permanently, okay. but you go down to Toronto or maybe Chicago quite often. Sure. Um, you can just book your requirements directly through our booking and reservations desks uh, if you like, or we can set you up on a program we call Alliance Access, which gives you predefined access to certain centers or all centers. Really, it's... It, highly customizable. Okay. You'll tailor uh, to my needs. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. What, what we found, it, it's funny. A lot of companies have, have tried to do things on a fully automated basis and, okay. you know, people like people and, and, and you know, the saddest day in the world uh, is when uh, travel agents went away. Uh, yeah. You know, they could say, Oh, this, let me, let me get you to the best room in the best hotel, right next to the best restaurant, right next to the, the theater. Yeah. Um, Instead, you've got to go on to a travel site, shop five different sites against each other, see yeah. which one's best, uh, calculate whether you're getting miles or you know, you've got to go through a process. Now, and self-serve yeah. is great and our selection is great. And the technology is amazing, but nothing beats somebody saying, here, let me help you. Yeah. Let me that take knows care. too, right? Like, exactly. yeah, you're right. So, you're so very we, much. Yeah. As, as a company, while we're a technology company, we have invested uh, substantially more than our competitors in the service side of our business. So okay. that, um, uh, we have the ability to one-on-one -on -one handle any client, uh, large or small that has what any, any need, 
that they've got. We really think a, a, a real concierge level service is elemental to the customer experience. It's not just the technology. It's the, it's the, the support behind the technology. Um, yeah. Interesting. And, you know, if, if you don't think that's true, just try and call your local phone number, your local phone company or your local utility. Yeah, they might okay. have great technology, but you're so angry yeah. after that call. You can't believe it. And nothing worked. So we can deal with that factor, the human factor. Interesting. Yeah, because I, I could very much see that, especially if you have a big client meeting in another country that you... um maybe never been to right oh, yeah. or another city and you just you need to make sure that when you get there and they get there that it's not just like that exists first off and that it's not like a total dump right like yeah it's not like an airport lounge or a total dump yeah or something. Um, a good example is is a meetings um, meeting rooms okay um uh, let's assume that you're going to have a meeting in london okay and you need a meeting room for six people and you need it in a nice part of town, maybe in a city or Mayfair or West End or somewhere. So you, you, sure. you organize it, you call one of our, or you put in a, a reservation uh, for a location that you like, um, and you're gonna get um, a confirmation from that and then a phone call. Okay. And the phone call is gonna say, well, I, I noticed you're booked from 12 to three. Uh, would you like lunch brought in? Right. Okay, no big deal. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I need some lunch. Okay, cool. Special meal requirements. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I need uh, uh, a halal meal, and I need a kosher meal, and I need somebody uh, only like chicken, and somebody only likes fish, and I've got two vegetarians. Sure. Ah, vegetarians or vegans? Yeah, interesting. Okay, so you, you, unless you have a team that thinks through that, Yep. You can't have enough check boxes on a website to get it right. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're using or the forms like a hundred pages and oh, people yeah. just give up, right? Oh, like exactly. <laughs> yeah, what the heck? But if some, let me help you all. I just want to make sure. and then instead of the center getting the reservation electronically, which they do with all the requirements electronically, the center also, the center manager, at the time the reservation is made, and then the day of gets a phone call. Okay. from our team saying, hey, remember, Kevin's going to show up today with five guests at 10 o'clock and they have this and this and this and they needed lunch at 1130, not at 12, like you'd normally serve it. Right. Um, is everything ready for them? Interesting. And somebody will say, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> and you yeah. know that if you didn't make that call, that Kevin wouldn't have had a good experience. So yeah. most of our competitors do an excellent job at their work, just great job at their work, but they haven't spent the level of attention to the service side. Interesting. And we think we're a technology company that provides service, but we really are successful because of the service, not just the technology. Yeah. And I, I and this is my personal opinion, but I think kind of the next big waves that are coming in kind of certain tech sectors are kind of bringing their technology kind of back into the physical world. And I think what you just talked about with actually giving like live personal customer service like that, right? I, I think that's exactly what it is, right? Like, sure. Yes. I want the technology. I need high speed internet. And I want a phone or whatever. I want a receptionist, but like having somebody that can just kind of handle the human side of that and back into the physical world side of it. When I have a meeting and you just handle kind of lunch for me or whatever other requests I need that well, to me, I think is the next kind of big thing. That, that's it, my opinion. No, I, I, th I think it is for years. We've taught our facilities, our office managers, uh, the center managers um, in, in, in the centers that we work with uh, and, 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 and have owned that when they are addressing a client, it's not about the facility and they shouldn't try and sell the facility. They shouldn't do anything relating to the facility. We tell them they should be interviewing for the job of becoming that client's office manager for his, Interesting. For, for his company. It's a personal interview. You have to have that person want to hire you to take care of their business and then you've got to do it. So we've tried to remove the, classic facility tour 
approach to office space. You know, here's the window, here's the bathroom, here's the conference room, (laughs) you know, and you go, oh man, I've done this so many times to really, what's your company do? How's it happen? How often does this happen? How can we think, oh, tell you how we would do that. Sure. Um, And it's the same with even a a front desk receptionist. Um, If you're in the waiting room and the receptionist would know that you're there to see the center manager and the center manager might be on a phone call or something like that for a moment. That receptionist is, hey, I, I understand you're here to see the center manager for a tour and, and, and talk about space. Let me show you how we answer the phones. No, interesting. Let sure. me show you how our phone system works while you're waiting. Sure. And we just have them walk right around the backside of the operators. The operator shows them how the system works and, and shows them everything that functions and how, how that person would handle their clients. And we say, we're not here to make our clients happy. We're here to make our clients, clients happy. Yeah. Uh, and, and she would demonstrate how that's supposed to be done. And it's not just cornball acting. It's like, that's the way you have to pull it off. And that's the way you have to deliver it. Sure. Um, no, that's interesting. But, and, and, and the whole industry, again, we, we go through iterative changes and it's our view. You were talking about the future of work and things uh, earlier and, and the, trying to stay ahead of the game. It's our view that, uh, actually, technology, a different type of technology that we're using today will play a bigger and bigger part in the offices or act of officing, activity of officing. We've always believed it's a verb. It's not a noun. Okay, it's interesting. An action um, uh, in the future. Um, and we think that the emergence of Gen Z into the marketplace is going to have a uh, a very um, big impact on the way officing is managed, the way uh, officing is delivered. Uh, uh, starting probably around 2023 is where we see it starting to emerge. Uh, and we see right now, you and I are talking about serviced offices and, and business centers and co working centers and virtual offices as they apply to all those things. But by 2023, we'll, we'll start seeing the emergence of virtual reality offices. Sure. Yeah. And you, companies like ours will actually be selling programming for your headset to create the office environment you want, regardless of the office you have or the location that, where it is in order for you to have the big corner office overlooking Central Park in New York, if that's what you want, or the office on the beach, uh, like I have, uh, sure. nice. <laughs> um, if you want, uh, you know, uh, and that environment, but it, and it'll all be interactive. Right. Some of the very uh, large gaming companies, yeah. they look at Gen Z and they say, you know, these guys are going to stop playing games pretty soon. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, uh, what, what, what's the next big market for us? And a, a couple of them are saying, oh, maybe it's office space. Well, when that happens, it will totally revalue the concept of location. Yeah. So I can have a big corner office overlooking Central Park in the Bur- yeah in, in Brooklyn. I don't have to pay for the physical location in overlooking Central Park because I can just put it on and wear it. Yeah, it's so, interesting. Wearable technology... Um, uh, office services programmed into that technology, both at the corporate, at the client level, the corporate level, at the, and the over-user level, um, is going to tremendously change the way that all officing takes place within the, the, the first world countries, at least, can support sure. it. Yeah. And is, that will radically impact the value of location, and it will radically change the utilization of those locations so that 50 story building overlooking central park. That's all offices. My excuse by 2025 or 27. Yeah. Um, and that will change our housing issue. And so everything is going to change based on the, this reallocation of technology into virtual reality officing instead of just virtual officing. Yeah, that's quite fascinating, but Frank, we're out of time. So let's close with mentioning where people can get more information about you guys and any other links you want to mention? Well, uh, the best link that, uh, from a business point of view, if anybody's interested in what we do, is alliancevirtualoffices.com. 
And uh, if you just want to know about our industry uh, and maybe subscribe to a free publication that would, would help you with that, uh, kind of keep up what's going on in the future of work in the workplace, um, would be allwork.space. Perfect, Frank. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be on the show, and I look forward to keeping in touch with you, and have a good rest of your day. Look forward to it. Thanks, man. Okay, bye. Thanks for listening. Please visit our website at buildingthefutureshow.com to join the free community, sign up for our newsletter, or to sponsor the show. The music is done by Electric Mantra. You can check him out at electricmantra.com and keep building the future.